Hey folks, Brayton, DCVMaker.com here. Today I've got the Every Sight Raptor glasses. Uh, those are the things that you see on my head right there. Uh, they're a heads-up display, so let me just shift in a little bit better gear here. There we go, sorry. I'm gonna work my way back. I was been out mountain biking and I made it like, I don't know, about 10 miles or so on trails. And then I found out that the entire trail length is 28 miles and uh, it took me about an hour to the first 10 miles. And at that rate, uh, I think the specialized folks will be pretty unhappy about maybe turning the bike, which they're probably already gonna be unhappy about because I think I'm supposed to return it two minutes ago and there's no way I'm anywhere near where I'm supposed to be. So I'm gonna take this time and talk about the glasses. Anyways, what you see there is heads up display. Um, it's a little different than something like the Solos glasses or of course Google Glass or Recon Jet in the past because it's got the heads up display portion inside the glass. So I'm seeing metrics on the screen right now, but you're not seeing anything like any doohickey on the outside of the glass. So it looks a little bit nicer. Now, as you probably guessed by now, it does have a camera in it. Uh, you can see it right there in the front. Uh, and that camera allows me to color both 1080p video, 720p video, as well as photos. Uh, and there's also voice commands. So I can actually control that by voice commands. I can say, go every site, record video. And sometimes like just then, it doesn't quite listen very fast or whatever. So I'd say it again, go every site. Come on, go every site, record video. And now it's starting to record video. Uh, which you'll see right there. And now you can see me holding the camera, recording me. It's a bit of a mind job right there, but it does work. But as you see, one of the issues is the stabilization. So there is no stabilization and the, the quality is kind of a low quality. You know, you can be 1080p and still be crappy and you can be 1080p and be beautiful. It really depends on the image processing and the sensors and everything else. Uh, so I would not describe these as the highest quality image processors likely because battery drain, all that kind of stuff contributes to it. But more importantly, the thing that you're seeing that's probably like disturbing you the most is just how bumpy it is. And so that's something that, you know, it's, it's not an expensive GoPro, it's all it comes down to. What's more interesting though, probably in some ways, is actually taking photos because those come out halfway decent. Uh, and I do basically the same thing there. I can also tap, uh, so I can end this video right now by just simply uh, swiping back. And then I can go ahead and tap normally to bring up the menu, but it's already there. Uh, and I can go swipe forward to go take a picture just like that. Swipe forward again, look over here, take a picture. Same thing. And that all works actually pretty well, which gets to the control part of things. Uh, so from a control standpoint, you can do voice controls or you can use this to swipe back and forth, swipe down to get rid of the menu, which I recognize that you can't see, but there we go, trying to get rid of it. I can swipe through data pages just like I would in a Garmin. I can turn on and off the map. So I'm on a map view right now that I'm seeing. I go ahead and try to record again. So here you go, so you can see this. There you go, there's the map view that you can see. Um, so it's got trails in there and dirt roads and stuff like that. So I've been out here, I've been seeing all this stuff. So that's kind of cool. So the unit has GPS in it, which is a pretty key difference to something like the Solos glasses, um, which did not have GPS or does not have GPS in it. So that depends on your phone. Whereas this has no direct phone dependency. Um, when, when I'm out riding, which is kind of cool. Afterwards, I can upload the data file to most of the major platforms. And it has both AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart sensor connectivity. I thought I paired it earlier with my heart rate strap, but in the village area, I uh, must have paired it to someone else's. So that's not working right now, but it's pretty cool. You can get all that in there for power, speed, cadence, uh, heart rate, as well as arrow with the AeroPod. So things like CDA measurements and whatnot are also available. As a side note, this is gonna be a big hill. Ugh. I generally have no idea where I am, despite again, having so many GPS devices, but when you're out like here, whoa, lizard, sorry, like went through the bike tires, but still alive. Um, I asked some dudes back there and they said, this road takes me back to the promised land. So we shall see. So the question is, what about things like clarity and all that? You know, it's not bad, it's, it's pretty sharp right now. Your eyes definitely have to adjust though, back and forth uh, between the road ahead and it. Probably faster than looking down at my Garmin, but you know, it's definitely not like 100% just look at the road ahead and see everything. Um, the other challenge too is that... So the other challenge, yeah, I'm actually not sure what the other challenge was because 
that apparently stopped recording and I don't know what I thought at that point, nor do I have any closer for the video because I don't even, I don't even know if I actually even filmed a closer for that matter, because I don't even have the audio for it. Like I don't have a microphone file or anything. So not sure what happened there entirely, um, but let's just chat about heads up displays in general. Now that I've kind of finished the ride, I also went for a ride with the Solo smart glasses that I picked up and rode with the next day. Um, so very kind of similar thing with the heads up display concept like the every sight ones, but also a bit different. So you'll notice on the front of these right here, in fact, if I just simply take these out of the box or already maybe get them pushed out, there we go. Um, you'll notice on these ones here, they've got a doohickey off the front, right? So Solos has basically the lens and the entire portion there, um, or like the display portion is out in front of the glasses versus the every sight that are inside the interior of the glasses. And so they look, um, in the case of the every sight, a lot slimmer, a lot sleeker, uh, and less geeky. You know, I put this on, you're like, mm, maybe not. Um, but software wise, I haven't really had the time to compare both of these. And so I don't know necessarily where each one stands. With every site, they've got training plans, so does Solos. Um, every site has navigation, so does Solos. Uh, and so all that kind of stuff I've got to dig into, like Strava, which one has real time segments. Um, those are the details I need more time for an end review, versus this is sort of just a quick first look. Uh, I think in general, though, Every site is probably closer to that utopia vision that people think of when they think of heads-up displays, um, mostly from a hardware standpoint. Uh, I think from a software standpoint, they're probably pretty similar. Also, in the case of every site, they actually have GPS in the unit versus uh, Solos. They have it in your phone. You have to depend on the phone. And that was actually my problem the next day I went out for a ride, is that somehow it disconnected in like 20 minutes in my ride, and then the glasses were totally useless from that point forward. And had I understood the glasses better than just a single test ride, I probably could have figured out how to reconnect them and be good to go. Uh, but still, that seems like something that's going to be maybe a pain longer term over time, um, even if it does work for a couple rides to begin with. So I guess those are kind of areas that I've got to certainly dig into a bit more and decide which one is the, the right one. I'll do definitely videos down the road. Um, I don't have every side glasses right now. That was just a quick demo test ride. Uh, but they're hoping to get me a unit I can try out. I do now have the Solos glasses, so I'll start using these uh, and digging into these over time. So as for a decision on these sort of devices, I'm honestly not sure yet. I, I haven't rode with either one of these two units well enough or long enough or whatever enough um, to decide. I haven't dug into all the super detailed nitty gritty on it. That's gonna come for review at some point down the road here. Um, I now have a Solos unit that I can try testing with and I've got an every site one that they're saying they're gonna send out to me to, to give a whirl. I don't have the every site one anymore that you saw in the video because that was just in, in California at Sea Otter for a test ride uh, for the afternoon. Still, I think there's, there's potential there. I'm I'm just not convinced yet on any of the players on the market for that matter. Um, I want to get to the point where I can take my bike computer, whatever it may be, and toss it and feel comfortable that I'm still getting the same information and the same usefulness and all that kind of stuff on a heads-up display. If I'm still depending on a bike computer, then in my mind I haven't really like achieved anything other than throwing 500 bucks out the window um, for a heads-up display. So I'm, we'll see. It's going to take some time. The good news though is if you hit that subscribe button at the bottom there, then you'll be notified as soon as I decide about that and post a review video about whatever comes next. Anyways, if you found this useful, whack that subscribe button or the like button. I appreciate it. Have a good one.